Welcome to Electron Line and now let's talk about the Moon and the motion of the Moon. The Moon is, of course, the Earth's only satellite and if this is our Earth, uh, this would be the Moon. Now, of course, the relationship size-wise is not quite right. The diameter of the Earth is about three and a half times the diameter of the Moon, so this isn't quite exactly the relationship. But as the Earth goes around the Sun, the Moon goes around the Earth. And it's interesting to note that when the Earth rotates on its axis, looking from the north, it rotates in a counterclockwise direction. The Earth will go around the Sun, orbit around the Sun in a counterclockwise direction, again looking from the north, and the Moon orbits around the Earth in a counterclockwise direction. So there seems to be a certain order in our universe in that way. What's also interesting is that the orbit of the Earth around the Sun forms what we call the ecliptic plane. It also turns out that the Moon's orbit around the Earth does not lie exactly in the ecliptic plane. It makes an angle of about 5 degrees, which, makes, which means sometimes the Moon will be above the Earth-Sun plane, the ecliptic plane, and then sometimes the Moon will be below the plane. And so the, the Moon, as it goes around, goes up here, comes down, comes down here, and of course that changes throughout the year relative to the Sun and the Earth as the Earth goes around the Sun. A few more specifics about the uh, Moon's orbit. Notice that the average distance between the Moon and the Earth is about 384,000 kilometers, about 239,000 miles. It takes light a little over one second to travel from the Earth to the Moon. So if we were to turn on a flashlight and point it to the Moon, that light from the flashlight would actually reach the Moon a little bit over a second later. Notice that the, Earth, that the Moon also does not have a circular orbit, but, but an elliptical orbit, and there's quite a difference in the distance between the Earth and the Moon. At times, at apogee, which means when the Moon is the farthest away from the Earth, it is 405,000 kilometers away, and at perigee, when it's closest to the Earth, it's 363,000 kilometers away. So that's quite a difference. Notice that the difference is about 40,000 kilometers, which is about 10% of the uh, average value, the difference between the farthest and the closest point. So there's, there's quite a bit of eccentricity in the orbit. Also notice that the orbital period is about 27.3 days. We call that the side real month because that's relative to the stars. It takes the moon exactly 27.3 days to go once around the Earth. And that's kind of where the term month comes from. It's, it's relative to the time that it takes for the moon to go around the Earth. Now, what we'll see in the future, in a future video, is that the phases of the Moon don't change at an orbital period of 27.3 days. It actually takes a couple days longer, and we'll see why that is the case. But this has a very interesting effect also. Notice that if the Moon were to go around the Earth in the ecliptic plane, then every time the Moon came between the Earth and the Sun, it would block the light from the Sun, and we would have a solar eclipse once every time the Moon goes around the Earth, and that is not the case. Eclipses are rather rare. They happen anywhere from two to five times per year. Five times per year is extremely rare, and so it's more like two, sometimes three times per year is the typical thing. And so there's a reason why that happens is because most of the time the Moon will be above or below the ecliptic plane when it gets in between the Earth and the Sun, therefore not causing the shadow of the Moon to hit the Earth, but to, hit the, hit the, uh, to go above the Earth. And when the orbit is like this, then of course the shadow of the Moon will hit below the Earth. But, you know, depending upon where in the orbit of the Earth, where the, uh, where the Earth is in its orbit, I should say, the Moon will either be above, below, and every once in a while it will be at that plane because as the Moon goes around the Earth, sometimes it, it will cross the plane on its way down and it will cross the plane on its way back up. So twice, will, and on two occasions, as the Moon goes around the Earth like that, every month it will go through the ecliptic plane. The thing is it can only cause a solar eclipse or a potentially a lunar eclipse when the Moon is behind the Earth. There will be a lunar eclipse if it's perfectly lined up, but that can only happen when the moment that the Moon goes through the ecliptic plane, the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun all lined up perfectly in a straight line. So that's what we know about the Moon's orbit, and if you're still interested, keep watching. We'll have all kinds of videos on the Moon and the Moon's orbit.